Good morning, guys. It's an early morning here. Happy first day of 5785, which begins this evening. Um, I don't even know what to call this video. I just need to share with you guys what the Lord just revealed to me, okay? So my devotional this morning was talking about God coming to judge the world. I'm actually just going to read it. It says, I will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in my truth. This promise is full of blessings and encouragement. It means that someday evil will be judged. My perfect justice will finally and forever prevail. Because you are my follower clothed in my own righteousness, you have nothing to fear. But those who refuse to trust me as Savior have everything to fear. Someday time will run out and my wrath will be terrifying to all who persist in unbelief. They will even call to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. I will judge everyone in my truth. The concept of absolute truth is widely opposed, yet is nonetheless rock-solid reality." Unbelievers will eventually bump up against this certainty, whether they believe in it or not. For you and all believers, my truth is a firm foundation on which you can live and work, play and praise. This is good reason to sing for joy. Okay, so my devotional is talking about God judging right between the, the righteous and the wicked. And it gives me scriptures on the bottom. To look into for reference right the first scripture is revelation chapter 6 verse 16 but what i like to do is i like to read the entire chapter when i get a scripture verse because i i want to get the context right sometimes if you just read a verse you can take it out of context so it's important to read the whole chapter so in revelation chapter 6 it talks about the seven seals during the time um you know, where many believe this is the the beginning of the great tribulation. And so in the beginning of the chapter, it starts off by saying that the first four seals released the four horsemen. OK, so if you guys don't know about the four horsemen, I encourage you guys to go read Revelation chapter six. But there's four horsemen, a white rider, a red one, a black one. And the last one is like a pale looking one which they describe that looks like a corpse, basically. It's like a palish green. And so what really caught, so what really caught my attention was the commentary that speaks of these four horsemen in my Bible. It says that probably these four horsemen symbolize political and military leaders destabilizing quests to expand their realms. And so the white horse ushers in the other three horses, the red, the black, and the pale looking one. And it says here in my Bible description that the rest, red horse represents the leading to war by political and military leaders. The black horse represents famine brought about from these lengths that they take and an epidemic disease. Does this not sound like what we're seeing as soon as October hit. As soon as October hit, we see Iran attacked Israel. We already know that there's war between Russia and Ukraine. Here in America, yesterday began a port strike. So all along the east coast of the United States, there is a current strike going on with all the port workers. And so they're asking for certain demands. And until they get those demands met, they are not returning to work. The port workers are, res are responsible with bringing in all of the supplies and goods that are imported from other countries into the United States. Most of our supplies and goods here in the United States do come from outside countries. So them picketing, basically striking will have a huge impact on the supply that the United States receive. Now, this is the crazy thing, okay? Remember how I told you guys, the black one represents famine. When, you, when I was reading in my commentary about the black horse, it says here, 
that the rider of the black horse carries scales for measuring grains and their prices. A heavily voiced comments on the scale significance citing inflated grain prices close to eight to 10 times normal. Now, I'm, let me finish up. It says siege and disruption of commercial routes will produce scarcity driving prices up. With the dock workers not working, this is basically a disruption of commercial routes because how do we get our commercial goods from other countries through the dock workers who are on this strike so a disruption of that it says it right here in my bible commentary will produce scarcity driving prices up and that is what they've been warning in the news that if this strike goes on for a long period of time for weeks that it could cause prices of whatever goods we do have at the moment to be to go up because you know this the rule of supply and demand that when you don't have a lot of something then you have to charge more for the very little that you have and so i want i'm sharing this with you guys because i want you to look at if you're in the united states i want you guys to look at the things the times and the seasons and what's going on and to approach it not from a place of fear but from a place of wisdom if we see here that these things are foreshadowed in the Bible, then we should be preparing ourselves accordingly. Make sure that you have adequate amount of supplies to sustain you if it does turn out that we get to these points that that there is such a scarcity that prices are driven up eight to ten times the normal amount. Okay. And so I'm I'm just mind blown because I was like, wow, all these things we're starting to really see come to pass here October as soon as as soon as we're stepping into this new Hebrew year 5785 we see all these things starting to break out right so then the next scripture that my devotional highlights oh no before we go to that one so in my Bible it highlights when it when I was reading in the commentary about the four horsemen it highlights Ezekiel chapter 14. So we're going to go there. And to my surprise, in Ezekiel chapter 14, I had verses 21 to 23 highlighted with a comment next to it. It said that I wrote this comment October 12, 2022. This is what we're about to witness. Okay. And this is what Ezekiel chapter 14 verses 21 to 23 say it says for thus says the lord god how much more when i send upon jerusalem my four disastrous acts of judgment remember four horsemen four disastrous disastrous acts of judgment sword war red horse famine black horse wild beast and pestilence pale horse took it I'm, I'm reading the scripture but i'm adding in from what we've read in Revelation, to cut off from it man and beast. But behold, some survivors will be left in it, sons and daughters who will be brought out, elected exiles. Be behold, when they come out to you and you see their ways and their deeds, you will be consoled for the disaster that I have brought upon Jerusalem. For all that I have brought upon it, they will console you when you see their ways and their deeds and you shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it declares the Lord. And then I put next to the scripture why God is preparing the people to collect the harvest after judgment. And guys, if you listen to the Bible study that I, I posted last night, it literally is talking about us being prepared to be sent out to do that, to collect the harvest because the time is right. The time is now to go out and disciple. And what are the odds that now my devotional leads me to Revelation 6 that then leads me here to this scripture I had highlighted two years ago that talks about the very thing God has been addressing about him preparing his elected exiles to go out now and collect the harvest because judgment is here and judgment we're going to see through sword famine and pestilence which we've already seen be birthed out right and now especially in October we're seeing it come like a it's like what we saw in 2020 but at a at a new it's it's like all happening all over again right but what I want to point out is that I wrote 
this note on October 12th, 2022. Do you guys know that this year, October 12th, so it really starts October 11th in the evening, but October 12th is the official first full day of Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the Jewish holiday, also known as the Day of Atonement. It's the day known as a day of repentance for purification, a day where, you know, judgment begins. And so I do not think this is by any coincidence that God is showing me this today, the day official full first day of 5785 or the eve of 5785 when it begins this after this evening, because these are the things to come. Okay. So for God's people though, remember I had shared with you guys in prior videos that when it is our time to be delivered, it is going to be during the time of judgment. So if God is making it clear in the scriptures that this is the time of judgment, then we know that this is also going to be our time of deliverance. And so the other scripture that my devotional highlighted this morning was Isaiah uh, 61. And so if you go to Isaiah 61, I'm sorry, guys, I have so many tabs open in my Bible right now. Isaiah 61. I'm so excited, guys. Like, we've been waiting for this, and it's coming. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not going to be beautiful. But for God's people, it's, it's going to be an amazing time. Let me get to Isaiah 61. Okay. Okay. So Isaiah 61 is titled the year of the Lord's favor. And I want you guys to see this because I'm not kidding. In my Bible, I had already noted the year of the Lord's favor. For some reason I had put 2024. Okay. And then if you guys read verses one to seven, it says, it says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because of the Lord, because the Lord has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. So this section right here is the role of the remnant. It's going to be the role of us, the elected exiles. Okay. And it says here, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to those who were bound, who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of God. So it's during the time of blessings and judgment that we will be doing this proclamation to those people who don't know the Lord. And so actually the verse 23 in Ezekiel chapter 14, where it talks about there's going to be sons and daughters that will be going out to console during this time of judgment. That's where we come in. This is our role. Okay. I want you guys to go in and read Ezekiel chapter 61, because this is for us. Okay. During this time. And it blew my mind that my rep, that my devotional highlighted Isaiah 61, because I think it was like three nights ago, I fell asleep with my worship music on on Pandora and I was woken up. I would have to look up the time because I don't remember. I think it was, I want to say 403 that I was woken up, but I was woken up. And when I woke up, it was playing Isaiah 61, like my Bible reading it. Isaiah 61 was playing like an audio. And then it was like a commercial type of thing. And then all of a sudden it said October 9th. It was like, visit the website October 9th. And I went to go look for this October 9th website and I couldn't find it. So I was like, that was very strange. But I had already associated Isaiah 61 to the role of the remnant. And so I don't know if there's significance to the October 9th in that commercial. I don't know. But I know that October is the month that's being highlighted through all of this. Okay. And so... The specific verse that my devotional highlighted in Isaiah 61 was verse 10. And it says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. 
Guys, if you've been with me, do you remember the dream that I had back in the beginning of August where I told you guys I had a dream that w there was a whole bunch of people staring at this event going on in the stadium, but everything was dark except what was going on in the stadium. And in the background, there was a line of people dressed in sweatsuits who were taking off their sweatsuits and being exchanged for those sweatsuits were being exchanged for white robes. Do you guys remember that dream? When I read this verse, that's what came to my mind, that dream, where it says here, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. <coughs> so this is that time, guys. This is that time where we turn in these wilderness clothes and we get our righteous garments. We get our garments to get ready to go out and disciple it's time, guys. It is time. And so after I got like after I was getting all these things, I was like, hold on, I need to I need to ask the Lord, like if he has anything to say, because this was blowing my mind. And so I got quiet in prayer. And this is what I heard. The divine timing has come. Alert the camps. Let the people know of my goodness. Strength and honor surround you. In my house, there are many rooms. Fill them. That's what I heard when I started praying. And so when when God says here, alert the camps, let the people know of my goodness. He's, he's telling me to let you guys know that we have to go out there and let the people know of his goodness. So it's time to get out and disciple. And this is this is tying in exactly with the Bible study that I God had been brewing in me all last month, right? And then it says, it says here, strength and honor surround you. So I looked this up to see if this is in reference to any Bible verses. And it's in reference to 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 27. Chronicles 16, 16, 27. Okay, so in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, what's going on here is David had reclaimed the ark, right? And so he ends up putting it inside his, in, in his, inside his land in a tent. And so he starts singing a song of thanks because he has the ark of the ark of the covenant with him, right? And in verse 27, he's talking about the goodness of God and he says, splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. So this, this verse is talking about God, the strength and majesty are before him and strength and joy are in his place. So when I was, so when it says here in the word strength and honor surround you, God is saying my strength, my honor surrounds you to equip you to be able to go out there and disciple and to speak of my goodness to the people. And then the last word, the last sentence where it says, in my house, there are many rooms, fill them. This is in reference to John chapter 14, verses two to six. Sorry, guys, if I'm talking fast, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited for what God is about to do. Okay. So here, John chapter 14, verse two to six says, in my father's house are many rooms. This is Jesus talking. If you were not, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And you know that where I am going and you know that the way and you know the way to where I am going. Sorry, excuse me. So here Jesus is talking about the places that he has created for his people in heaven, okay? And so when he says here, in my house, there are many rooms, fill them. He's saying, go out and preach the gospel and and allow the souls to be, to be met with my goodness, right? To be met with my gospel so that they can receive salvation, so that they can come and live in heaven and be with God as well. And so... This is the this is our task, guys, as we're stepping into 5785. We are supposed to go out there and be the elected exiles that God has called us to be for during this time and rebuild the church. Go out and collect the harvest. This time of judgment is here. 
And so as we see the things unfold in regards to the time of judgment, we know that our time of deliverance has come forth. And so we have to go out there and start doing what God has called us to do. Okay. And so I'm excited guys. I'm excited for this time because I know it, that even as the days get darker, the light of the church is going to shine brighter than ever before. And so I pray that this is a message of, ex of, of excitement for you guys, that it causes you to rejoice because you understand your place in the kingdom. Okay. And so this is not a message to instill fear, but one to let you know of the times and the seasons. And so that we can prepare accordingly and go out and do what God is calling us to do. Okay. And so until next time.